The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Uh, welcome to the March, uh, what is today? The March 8th? March 9th? The March 8th. Uh, terrific uh, Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes. And uh, skipping my uh, my normal intro just simply because it takes a lot of that energy. And right now, just dealing with a nasty cold out there. So uh, I would like to hear from you. Absolutely, if you have some questions. And we've got three different ways for you to reach out to me. You can give us a call. Preferred way, 877-927-6648. And if you can't call in, no problem. You can just simply send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. And inside the uh, subject heading, just put the radio show. I love when they put radio show question mark because it's a radio show question. I'll be happy to get to that. Of course, inside the Tiger's Den, you can send me any kind of ping that you want, a private or a public uh, ping. So let's go ahead and get to these markets here on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is uh, Tiger Financial News Network. We've got the Dow trading off 17 points, so relatively flat, trading on 24,783. The S&P is up 3.5 points, uh, a little over one-tenth of a percent. NASDAQ up four-tenths of a percent, trading on 29.50, I'm sorry, trading on 69.58. Russell's off about five points, but this has been the strong mover off of the uh, bottom last Friday. So not really a big deal out there. NASDAQ Composite is up. The Wilshire's up. Uh, Trandies are down one-tenth of a percent. That's 11 points. Spot Volatility Index is trading at 1706. Now, that's very important because it has just dropped below its 50-day exponential moving average. So we'll take a look at that. And that's really going to be the end-of-day number that you're going to want to be paying attention to. I do not know where it's going to close at the end of the trading session, but we'll see what that, I think it's around 17, 15, 17, 11, somewhere around there. We'll find out what the current 50-day uh, exponential moving average is. Gold is back six bucks. Silver's off a penny out here. Lead the charge. The upside, you got booking holdings up 31 bucks. Win up 11. Vail Resorts up 11. Google's up at eight. Cigna Corporation down 21. Bucks. That's nearly 11%. Tech Data Corp down almost 20 bucks or 18%. Synex Corp down uh, 10 bucks, 8%. So we've got things to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. We do have our first radio show question coming from James. So James says, hi, Steve. Hi, James. Uh, how do you I think you probably wanted to put how do you look at charts like the S&P when, uh, like today at 3.30, President Trump will talk about tariffs and tomorrow important jobs number. Do charts tell you anything in light of those future events? Lots of laugh. Well, sometimes they do. Um, and so how do we trade the 3.30 announcement of tariffs out here? Well, you know, I don't think we have to worry about a, um, you know, buy the rumors, sell the news out here, right? We already know what the news is, so to speak. You already know what the worst of it is, so it's already been released. I don't know how the market is going to respond to whatever it is it gets produced, talked about at 3.30. So instead, you know, let's just look at the markets, James, and see what the signals are now. Um, and, you know, if you're already in your positions, and the positions right now, let's say, are bearish, as an example. I mean, uh, you're losing. Let's say you're in positions... Um, you're in, you're in positions, you've been in them for a while, and you're losing money. I don't think that the announcement at 3.30 is necessarily going to be something you would use to try to save that. Instead, you want to look at each individual position that you've got, even if it is in the S&P 500. So why don't we look at that? Because since that's what your question was, and you said, and you asked the important question, do our charts tell us anything? So I started with the, uh, I don't know how this works, it just seems to work out that way. I, I mentioned the VIX, spot, spot Volatility Index, and right now... Uh, and we, I like to look at this, uh, James, in relationship at the bottom and take a look at what's going on in the S&P 500 at the uh, top out here. And the 50 days at 1718, and we're trading at 1706. We've been as low, supposedly as low as 1491 today, although that, uh, excuse me for a minute here. And I'm going to do everything I can to not cough into this uh, microphone, but uh, 
you know, I may need to every now and then just uh, blow the old uh, nostrils out there. You don't want to see something dripping while I'm sitting here talking. I certainly don't want to see that. So the key here that I would say, uh, James, is at the end of the day, as much as I hate to make that statement, if at 4 o'clock close, the spot volatility index is down below its 50-day uh, exponential moving average of 1718, and you were long the S&P 500 as an example, that's what you want to see. The spot volatility index has not been below the 50-day exponential moving average since I believe last time was around January the 12th out there. When the spot, and if that happens, all that that tells you is the S&P 500 should travel higher. Higher to where? You've got to go really to the last swing point, and that's going to be the uh, February 27th level. Could be the low of it, 27.44. Could be the high of it, 27.89. And if uh, price takes out the 27.89, then you have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside out here. Um, and, and, and you would also anticipate that if the VIX index closes below the 50-day, that it's worked to the upside. The spot volatility index is done for a while until it starts doing its work to the downside. And the work to the downside right now today, I would give you a price target of 953. That target will be different tomorrow. As we take a look at the S&P 500, what, um, you know, let's just put in a channel line, right? So I don't have any channel lines out here for the S&P 500. So we can do this. And for channel lines, we're using the body of the candle. And so if we take a look at a price channel, well, that's interesting how that worked out. And I know, I think Basil does a lot of price channels out there. Um, and if we take a look at the uh, price channels out here for the S&P 500, this is how I would draw mine. Um, and what we're trying to do is you're trying to, you're trying to uh, take each channel line, the top and the bottom, and try to find at least three, you're looking at the body of the candle. So either opens or closes. I like to say co-located opens or closes out there. And, uh, and in this case here, I think the top channel line, we've got, in essence, three uh, connections out there. So pretty good price channel. So what we can also say is if the S&P 500 were to close above, looks like the value today is 27.54. Well, then the downtrend channel inside of the S&P 500 has also been broken because it's a down channel. So broken meaning price would close above the top of that channel. So that combined with a spot volatility index that closes below the 50-day would say, okay, you're back off to those numbers that I came up with, right? Either the February 27th level or an A to B equals CD to the upside. I don't have the A to B equals CD pattern at the moment, um, the tool on this uh, chart. We could put it on there, but let's just try it now. What happens if um, price just hits that level and then bounces off it? Then you know you've got your, you're in this price channel, right? Charts are going to reveal to you. What's that mean? Well, it means you can go down and test the February 9th lower. You can go down and test the bottom of the channel. Now, the bottom of the channel today is about 25.21. You know, tomorrow it'd probably be about 25.17, something along those lines. So are the charts telling us something out here before the 3.30 or before the jobs report out there? I say pay attention to that spot volatility index. Also, with regard to the S&P 500, what we can look at, and we'll do this when we come back from the break, is take a look at its market breadth, which yesterday, <coughs> sorry about that, I should just cut it off right when I had 30 seconds to go. There would have been no cough. So I'm going to cut off right now. I'm going to go cough during the break, and I'll come back. No more coughing. But we'll take a look at the positive market breadth in the S&P 500. We'll get right back. You don't buy into that nonsense, do you? You know, you can't time the markets. I didn't. And in 2006, I set out on a mission to do just that. I began by surrounding myself with the greats like Tom O'Brien, Larry Pesavento, David White, and Basil Chapman. I read countless books and even looked to the moon and planets for answers. Now, we both know that trading is 80% mental. So I learned the exact tools that Tony Robbins uses to overcome fear. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability. Last March, the folks at Timer's Digest began tracking my newsletter signals, which through January 18th, 2018 placed me as the number one gold timer for that exact time frame. Now, I can't officially be recognized until Timers Digest has a full year of signals, but clearly, I've learned how to time the markets, and I'd like to teach you how to do that as well. Subscribers to Mastering Probability gain access to my live and archive workshops where I show you the exact same patterns that earn me this number one ranking. If you're looking for great market calls and an education, sign up for Mastering Probability today at TFNN.com. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow's off 26. S&P is up uh, two points out here. We're trying to answer the question to the charts. Tell us anything before the... Uh, Trump dump at uh, 330 out here where supposedly there's going to be some type of announcement with regard to what the whole tariff deal is all about out there. And and so we've already covered the spot volatility. And next we take a look at some channel lines and some price objectives inside the S&P 500. We switched over here to take a look at the daily market breadth, which did have a positive crossover yesterday, meaning as we speak right now at 118, there's 139 stocks that are trading above the top of their daily box versus 81 down below the bottom. So about 30% above and 16% below. So nearly a 2 to 1 ratio. That's pretty good. That's a good signal out here. But we've seen a number of uh, crossover signals since um, February 15th. So when I see this kind of action, it actually says, hey, we're like in this consolidation, which we may be in with regard to the S&P 500. The consolidation level inside the S&P is pretty much confirmed by looking at the weekly chart, which has a bearish crossover still in place. This, too, has had a couple of um, not false signals, but, you know, it's so important to understand what type of market we're in. Markets are doing one of right three things. They're either going from lower left to upper right, uh, upper left to lower right. Or they're going sideways and some combination, perhaps, of lower left, you know, depending on the price channel uh, that they might be trading within. So the S&P 500, you know, in its weekly and its daily tells us we're in some kind of price channel. Now, this tells me some type of horizontal. You and I looked at a downtrend channel line. You can draw that on your chart. If there's a close above it, then you'll know what that means. It means break out to the previous swing point and maybe beyond out here. That's what the S&P market breadth is telling us at the moment. And if I were to, and, and so if you break out of the channel line that we came up with, um, then what I would say is uh, we we probably take out the previous swing point and we make that A to B equal C D inside the S and P 500. I say that just simply by doing this, uh, by looking at this and recognizing that there is an annual seasonal cycle. Now this is for the Dow not the S&P 500, but this is for the Dow. We know that the Dow generates a low at the end of January on average. 
This year it came in February 8th or 9th out there, right within side the realm of what we were looking for. The other thing we know, it was a nice over 10% correction, which we hadn't had for a couple of years out there. So we've got that out of our blood. And now we're in the favorable seasonal cycle. It should take prices higher up into the May time frame. doesn't really typically make its uh, ultimate high until July. And then it starts heading down into the Santa Claus rally phase into October. This is the normal pattern that is out here. In order for the Dow to do that, it's really been the laggard. Of And if we take a look at here is a Dow chart with regard to uh, it's a monthly Dow chart. And you'll see a number of different channel lines out there. Let me do this here. Let me turn them on and off. So let's take a look at the uh, larger ones first. Let me do this here. Channel. There we go. So now we're just looking, in essence, at um, at one set of channels. Now, this is the monthly chart out here. And the way that, uh, remember, we, you and I, we take a look at horizontal trading ranges. Remember, prices can go, you know, lower left, upper right, upper left, lower right kind of a thing. We also take a look at sideways action. I don't have horizontal trading ranges on this chart. But in, a, in, in with using horizontal trading ranges, once we find out where the primary range is, we have that number. We just add lines to the top and bottom of that to figure out where the next uh, group of uh, resistance or support might be. And when you take a look at channel lines, you can also add that distance, which I've done here with regard to these uh, green diagonal lines. And we can see that price appeared to be, at least in January, heading to its uh, one to its third channel line up here in the uh, 28,000 level. Of course, you know, I have called for 30,740. Um, when I did my segment with Tom on Monday, I said that may, may be a detour here. And the detour is when you take a look at, um, when you take, whoops, whoa, how did I do that? Uh, there we go. When you take a look at this annual seasonal cycle, what's really important about the way you get a confirmation that you're in the uh, you're now in the bullish groundwork or territory of price moving from wherever low it made, whether it's January or February, up into the so-called sell in May cycle, is clearing the highs of the prior year. And that's this uh, level from 1229. That was the last trading session of the year. The close there, it's the close. I know I said high, but it's the close, high or low, doesn't matter, of 24,719. We're trading right now at 24,217. So Dow has been a laggard. If the Dow can clear this level, then with regard to horizontal trading ranges out here, I don't even need my my normal system. I can tell you that the range that we're in is in essence between 23,368 and 26,616. Pretty large, um, pretty large range out there. But if in fact price ever takes out the highs from January, that's a 26,616 level. And let's just say that's March or April. The prices are moving higher into May, just following along the path of the normal seasonal cycle out there. So um, I hope that really helps, too. I don't know if I need to really show you the other channel lines that I had drawn here, because I think I'm getting my point across, so to speak. We know that the Dow has been a laggard. You know the Dow has been a laggard. You know it's been a laggard. And closing over 24,719 is important. A close below 24,719 says you you run the chance of going down and testing the 23,368 level or at least testing the top of the rising price channel out there. So we'll just have to take things one day at a time out there. But you were asking, you know, did the charts tell us anything ahead of time? I would say watch the end of the day close inside the spot volatility index. I think right now it's bounced back above that 50-day level because it's trading out at 1735. So I hope that that helps you out. Let's see if we've got another question that has come in. Now, we do have one. This is from Tim. And Tim says, please uh, look to see if this is a good price to enter on TAP. T-A-P is the uh, ticker symbol. So let's go take a look at TAP. Sounds like this should be a beer stock. Um, I don't know if it is. Uh, but we're going to find out. Well, of course, Molson. Hey, let me tell you. If you're wondering whether you should buy a six-pack of Molson or not, I say buy it. Get a Molson. What a great uh, beer. I haven't had a Molson for a long time, but I am a Detroiter and grew up in Detroit. And that means now it's core, so I don't know if they changed it, but uh, hopefully they haven't. Hopefully it's still brewed in Canada. They've got far better water over there or whatever it is that they brew. But Molson, what a great uh, beer that was. Uh, who who brewed Bredore's? Anybody anybody in the den know who is it that uh, brewed 
Labrador beer out there. That might be worth a uh, look up, but that is a, a great beer, Brador. So if we take a look at Tap Molson out here, and you're asking, is it a good buy? Is it a good buy? So this may have formed the uh, C point of an A to B equals CD four or five trading days ago as it got down to the low on March the uh, 1st. So you may have an A to B equals CD. You like the mere fact that it's trading above 79.43 today because that was the top of its uh, daily structure, daily bear structured uh, TAS market profile. Bear structured because the center line was at 77.19. And so it was closer to the top at 79.43 than 70.83. So, Tim, you'd like to see this close above 79.43 and we get back from this breakout here we'll go tell you why stevie says hey this is targeting 83.23 or 85.86 out there and you just have to determine whether it's the right reward or risk for you of course you'd like to see the s p and the dow moving in the same direction as whatever individual stocks you have as well you'd just like to see it we'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com Back, uh, folks. So we're just taking a look at uh, ticker symbol TAP, which is Molson Coors. And the question is, you know, is this a good place to uh, buy? So this is trying to break out above a level of resistance. The, the good place to have bought inside of Coors turns out was really last week. And last week, and we take a look at the uh, weekly chart out here and its set of uh, profiles, it was, was down at the 76.66 level. 
And that was a pretty decent uh, place for a buy. Now, I don't know if Molson Coors is really going to be able to break out above 85, 86. So your, your price targets to the upside. And the reason is we just looked at a bullish structured box on the daily basis. And this is a very bearish structured box, meaning the center line at 83.23, much closer to the top of the box of 85.86 out there. So that should be a pretty stiff resistance area. So you're at, let's say, 80 bucks, you might get 83 out of it. Uh, maybe you get 85. Uh, that's taking a look at the weekly time frame. Your average true range out there is a buck 73. So your stop needs to be more than a dollar 73 after you enter. Uh, typically, some type of Fibonacci expansion, 1.272 or 1.618, and then um, and that will determine then for you exactly how many shares. So if you're going to risk 100 bucks, and let's say that stop comes out to be you know 250, you just divide the 100 by 250. That tells you 2.50 dollars how many shares you would buy. That would be your position size. Then you've just got to determine whether the reward risk is uh, right for you out there. So hopefully that uh, helps you out. Now that's not to say that uh, price couldn't make its way up to uh, 95.38. That's what the monthly looks like out there on a uh, Molson. So I hope that that uh, helps you out. Uh, we've got a question that was posted here inside the Tiger's Den, and this was uh, our read on Kobe Bryant because he won an Academy Award. KBE is the uh, ticker symbol, and so uh, which is the uh, S and P. Uh, bank ETF out here. And so the question is, uh, so it was shorted at 51.20 earlier. What does it look like uh, to me out here? So in order to do that, what I really need to also do, what I'd like to also do is uh, get it on my other system as well, just because then we can do the wave count together and we can take a look at, uh, so it's right now at 50.49. This is a bummer. I'm not having an... Uh, I'm, 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 uh, I'm a little, little, little. You don't, don't worry. I'll, I'll eventually. Here we go. Okay. So, let's look at what we know about on the uh, daily chart out here. So, on the daily chart, we can see that this thing has tested a prior swing point, 51.58. Did it test it? Yeah, tested it uh, today. Exactly, 51.58 out there. And so that swing point had volume of 2.5 million shares. You were moving into it yesterday with. 2 million shares, so lighter volume, and today you've got 866. So you're going to have a test and rejection of that swing point, uh, it looks like, on lighter volume today. Depends on what the uh, close is. And you're going to close below the low of that swing point, 5075. So it's done its work to the upside. So if you've shorted it, I get that. That makes a lot of sense out here. We take a look at it. Where is the downside potential inside of this? Well, like anything, upside potential, downside potential, our first look is always going to be to the prior swing point. That prior swing point here is going to be the trading session of March the 2nd. So as price is moving down, assuming it's moving down, uh, the top or the bottom of that uh, daily profile is at 49.93, and the top of this session is at 50.01. So you're going to, uh, you should be able to get 49.93 out of it. And what you'd like to see is more than 4.1 million shares as price is moving into that swing point. If it's moving in there with more, uh, than uh, 4.1 million shares, 4.2 million shares. And it says, okay, you probably go test the low, 48.35 out there. Um, and that's what it says. And if it breaks through that, then what you're looking at is the swing point prior, which is going to take you back into the February 9th area. So that's what the banking ETF looks like on the daily chart. On the weekly chart, price is trading above the top of its weekly box at 49.10. So it gives you another price projection area, 49.10 out there. So since we've tested the daily swing point high, we're testing the weekly. So the weekly had volume of 9.5 million shares, and this doesn't look good because you've done 9.4 million shares, and it's only Thursday at 1.34 in the afternoon. So what the, uh, what the S&P ETF is doing, KBE, on a weekly basis is pushing higher into that swing point with volume out there and it says it's going to be back up there at some point in time maybe there's a retracement but when you push a swing point with volume as this is doing a larger time frame i always believe has more meaning than a shorter term time frame at least what you want to see by tomorrow is this to close below 5042 at least reject that swing point again that's a swing point that began the week of january 22nd at least you'd like to see it rejected because if it doesn't it says to me you're going to go back and test 51.58 sooner than later out there. 
And uh, let's take a look at the weekly chart out here. The weekly chart uh, did show that price was moving higher, doing with less relative energy. Four or five weeks ago, gave you a bearish signal. Let's just try to see where this thing might be in wave counts out here. It looks to me like we're just going to have to go to wherever the wherever the low is. I think let's want to grab it, the correct one. Come on, work with me. It's always nice. There we go. So now let's go see where where was this thing in wave counts out here. Well, so it made its fourth wave out there today. Was uh, did not take out the highs. Um, you know, price is trading right into Stevie's red line out here. So I'm just looking at the weekly. Do I have any better feel? We just know that that was resistance. It was set up by that bearish engulfing from the week of February 2nd, and the high was the week prior, which was resistance. So we know that we have resistance out there. But the weekly time frame, Mr. Z says to me that this is pushing higher with volume out there. Let's see what the monthly chart shows us, if there's anything out here on a monthly chart. And if we do a, a wave count on it, say, see where we're at only in wave count number three this week at least at this moment looks like it's going to be number seven in the tom demark uh, setup sequence out here and uh, if this does pull lower 4817 ought to be a level of support so what does it say short term let's just uh, pull all this together short term on a daily basis thing is rejected a swing point is trading below 5075 should pull back maybe 4993 be careful on this thing uh, because on a weekly basis, it says it's going to be back up into 5158 sooner than later. And that was the uh, S&P 500 uh, banking ETF, KBE. So we've taken care of TAP. We've taken care of taking a look at the S&P 500. We're looking real quickly to see if there are any other questions that have come in. And the answer is no, there is not. So let's go back and take a look at some of the other suspects, normal suspects out here that I'm sure that folks want to take a look at. One being gold, which is back at six buckaroonies out here. So what is gold really doing? And as we take a look at the uh, gold contract, well, let me put it in. We can't look at it unless we actually have the data on the screen. What we know, you're welcome. What we know is that uh, when we take a look at this is uh, gold is doing nothing more than um, testing an area of support. And that real area of support is between 131540 and 131960. Both the bottom of its daily and weekly profiles out there. The daily profile has a bullish structure. It says 131540 ought to hold. The weekly profile has a bullish structure. It says on a weekly basis price ought to close above 131960. Now, the daily basis um, has already hit the high. Now, price is just headed back, it looks like, to 13, 15, 40. I don't see anything negative here other than a test, potential test of support out there. And if somebody was asking about gold, I hope that helps you out. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan 
Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com. Then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're going to stay inside the banking sector as we go out to Denver and speak with Ron. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Uh, how are you today? Great, Steve. Thank you very much. I know the market is choppy, and you know, and then Trump's going to talk later today, and then yes. you got jobs numbers tomorrow. So I don't know. Maybe it might be prudent to wait. But I was looking at Morgan Stanley, and the, he said the banking sector strong, and I just thought, what are your thoughts for, for your going long calls on that for the next couple of weeks? Okay, so let's take a look at Morgan Stanley because it, it this chart here is a little different than taking a look at that banking sector, the KBE out here. So here's what I can share with you with regard to Morgan Stanley. It has clear lines of defenses set up on its daily uh, profile out here. And if we take a look at the trading session from January 29th, um, and that is its uh, swing all-time swing point high, I believe, that was a nice little uh, bearish reversal candle known as a shooting star, the opposite of a hammer. This occurs when you have uh, price trading to the upside. And so that's a pretty significant resistance area, 5805. Well, we know that's taken place uh, since the uh, February 8th standpoint, is this thing has a really large market profile, a really wide box, meaning it runs from the high of 5805 as resistance, the top of that shooting star candle, all the way down to the bottom of 5161 out here. Now, there was another shooting star. As price moved into that January 29th swing point that had 7.5 million shares, you had another hammer candle with 11.7 million shares on February 27th. So sellers are telling you where they are camped out out here and then you have this bearish structured profile that is out here ron it doesn't say that price can't go higher but when i take a look at this stock individually versus what we looked at inside of uh, the uh, kbe out here um, i don't see taking the uh, call at this stage if we were down at the bottom of the market profile and we were coming down on light volume then i'd say yes but 5805 is about all you're going to maybe get on this. So I, I would I would sit on this trade here as I take a look at the uh, daily time frame. But I should look okay. at the weekly as well. You know, and the weekly has a nice bearish reversal signal as well that entire week of January 29th. 39 million shares out there. Then uh, you pushed into a 53 million last week. But this week was the test. And if this week... Morgan Stanley were to close below 55.39. It says to me this has more work to do to the downside. Might just be 52.53, but would say, nah, don't take that uh, call option on Morgan Stanley. Okay, super. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate yeah, my that. pleasure. My, my pleasure. Thanks for calling. And and so that turns out to be good, folks, because we get to take a look at an individual stock 
inside of the financial sector versus now I don't even know that Morgan Stanley's inside the KBE out there. Uh, so you probably know whether it is or it isn't. But um, so a different chart, uh, different uh, uh, different uh, indicators and tools and everything that are out there. So thanks uh, for calling in, Ron. Much appreciated. Um, so let's see, what else do we want to? Let me just check, make sure that I don't have any uh, emails here. We've got about five minutes in this segment. I don't have anything here. If there's something inside the den that somebody wants me to take a look at, just go ahead and post that in there. Or if you want me to look at something for you individually, just send me a quick email, steve at tfnn.com. So I looked at gold, no big deal there. Silver being back a penny, no big deal there either. Uh, Dow's off 89 points right now, 90 points right now. So you're getting some uh, selling to the downside. But we know the Dow is a weak link out here. Um, if you have time, can you give me your thoughts on when? I can, Daniel, and I'm sorry that I didn't, uh, I think you typed that in before, and I just simply totally overlooked it, so my apology there. So let's go take a look at Steve Wynn's operation, or no longer his operation, or, I mean, he's the shareholder, right, but does he, he's no longer part of the uh, board, or, in any event, let's just go take a look at Wynn. What Wynn's doing today, which is if Ron were to take, for example, a long position inside of Morgan Stanley, this is the type of action he'd want to see. What type of action is that? Well, what is it's closing above, assuming it's going to close above 174.29, the top of a bearish structured box out here. So you like to see that. So that's pretty good. But there are some problems inside of uh, this stock chart. Let's go draw them in. And that is resistance is 178.04. You're 178.65. So I don't know, Dan, if this is a one-hit wonder. Your question is, do I see this at least testing January 203.63 out here? And uh, that would be, this is uh, looking at it as a long. So the 203 level is January 25th. So, you know, I had big, massive volume to the downside based on those reports that were out there. So big selling the downside. So, um, you know, that, that could be a tough sledging area. If this closes one underneath 178.04 today, Dan, I'd say no. I don't see that at the moment, not looking at the daily chart, because resistance will have held. Remember, gaps are our friends, and so that is a, that is a non-repaired window. You can call gaps windows out here. They get repaired when you close, when you, like any window, you know, you take a window to the shop, you get it uh, you get it repaired. Well, on a stock chart, it's repaired because price goes ahead and closes above where that gap was. That would be 178.04. If it does close above that, Dano, then maybe you're on to something. So let's take a look at what does on to something mean. Well, geez, on a weekly basis, which was also a bearish structure, had a different level it had to get above, was 168.96. So this says, geez, yeah. But that would say still you've got the gap out there. And we take a look at the gap. This says then, okay, if you're not in it, wait for this to close above 178.04 tomorrow, you know, the end of Friday, versus trying to get into this thing today. Because if it does close below it, it'd be just like the week of um, February 5th as price tried to push higher and it rejected and closed lower. So then it would tell you and I that and on a weekly basis, you know, that uh, swing point has 39 million. You're into it with 10 million. You need that window to be repaired. Since it's there on the daily, it's there on the uh, weekly. I say, uh, I say, I uh, got to stay put. Now, the monthly chart doesn't look too shabby out here. Uh, when I say it doesn't look too shabby, we don't have a bearish reversal signal. All right. So let me see if I can put win. I don't, I don't need to see. I know I can do it. So let's just put win out here, W-Y-N-N. -N. Whoops, got to type it in there, W-Y-N-N. -N. And uh, let's put this on a monthly chart. I'm just curious what signals, if anything, come out here on a, a monthly time frame. And so far, really nothing. Um, nothing, but I was just looking, hey, where are we at in our Tom DeMarc count out here? nowhere near any kind of uh, reversal or anything. And so, uh, you know, the monthly chart is telling you longer term, Danny, there's no reason for this not to get back to the highs out here from March of uh, 2014. But uh, not so fast. Let the weekly, let the daily prove it to you. You know, if you're not in the stock, I don't see any reason to jump into it uh, today. So I hope that that helps you out. But then I will answer the question, does it look like this thing will go ahead and test 203.63? The monthly chart says, yeah, it absolutely will go do that. So it's just a matter of uh, when and timing 
and just have this thing, let this uh, stock prove itself to you come the end of business uh, tomorrow out there. So, folks, if you do have any questions, we're going to be going into this uh, next hard break here in just a moment or two. So uh, send it in quickly. And if you send it in and I don't get to it, well, it'll just be because of lack of a time. And we'll do it for you tomorrow. Steve Rhodes with TFN and the Dow is off 65 points. Things change so rapidly here. Spot volatility and it's trading out at 1745. We'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. Now, there's been a lineup change. You know, uh, it is uh, it is World Series time. And uh, so lineup change uh, is uh, that uh, you're going to get the benefit of listening to Andy Heck from uh, 2 to 3. And then uh, your favorite polar bear in mind is going to be back at 5 to 6 out there. So they're switch hitters out here. So that's what you've got uh, coming next. And Andy will spend his time, I'm sure, taking a look at all your commodity questions out there. As we go into the uh, close of this show out here for the last two minutes, the first question that was on our, uh, I came across on an email, was in looking at the S&P 500. So I thought, why don't we go take a look at the ES Mini 30-minute chart out here, a set of tools that you and I like to use. They work on all time frames. And that is, uh, you're looking at the chart singing in the key of G. That's letter G. That's wave number seven. Uh, that uh, is where it made its high. So you see that lettering out there. Now, whenever you, uh, that, that sets up a level of where the market should turn and did turn. 
when it uh, confirmed that seventh wave move. And in this case here, we had an extra benefit inside the ES Mini because we knew where the Tom DeMarc uh, 9 count started at. And that's the red dashed line that's on my screen. And that becomes your first level of support. And so the ES Mini did its work to the downside thus far. Got right down to that support level, and it has held. Is it going to bust through that support line? I don't know. I can tell you one thing. Um, it doesn't need to try to, oh, it's work to the downside has been done. When we take a look at just this 30-minute time frame out here, what I would need to do in order to truly evaluate is switch over and take a look at multiple time frames, levels of support and resistance using their TAS market profiles, and I can't do that in 18 seconds out here. But if price does close back above Stevie's red line, and that's at 27.36 basically as we speak right now, then things are headed to the upside. And that's really what the daily chart is telling us, because if you look at where Stevie's red line on this is, you're at 27.21. So if price closes below that, you know, bad news bears. Says you go back to the low of about 26.47 from a few days ago. Don't forget the options contracts are rolling over. So you're looking at the June numbers as we speak right now. Folks, thanks for being here. Stay tuned. Andy Heck is up next. Tom O'Brien, 3 to 5. And you've got uh, David White from 5 to 6. I'll be back with you on Fantastic Friday. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.